Hello there, it's Cassie. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. I am back today with the Simon Says Stamp April 2019 card kit called Hello Darling. And as of filming, this kit is still available, so I will have that linked down below. So let's go ahead and get started by taking a look at what comes inside this kit. As always, these kits are jammed with goodies, and at the $34.99 price point, it's a win. You always get a piece of candy, which is critical when you're crafting. You also get the Simon Says Stamp Rain Boot Planter Die, and it's big. So it's like three inches by three inches across, basically. You also get the Tonic Bohemian Teal Nouveau Vintage Drops, and I'm going to take that out and just kind of put it on the top. Of course, I'm in high elevation, so mine always likes to spew out, so I'm going to make sure and get that taken care of before I actually start using it on cards. <laughs> Then you're also going to get two 4x6 sheets of Simple Stories Spring Farmhouse stickers. These are darling. I, used, I almost used them all up. You're also going to get one 4x6 sheet of Sizzix Black Foam Adhesive. That's fantastic. You're going to get one each of the Simon Says Stamp envelopes in metallic sea glass, ivory, cotton candy, and dark chocolate. You'll get one sheet of Craft 6x6 cardstock, which this thing is thicker than actual cardstock, I think. And then you're going to get the 12 double-sided sheets of Simple Stories Spring Farmhouse 6x8 papers. So you could basically get two card fronts out of each piece. It's wonderful, and they're beautiful. I'm so drawn to colors like this. You're also going to get the Simon Says Stamp Hello Darling 6x8 stamp set. This thing is gorgeous, and it has some awesome sentiments. I'm sure I'm going to be going back to this one many times for the sentiments alone. I love it. You're also going to get your idea sheet, and then you're going to get one sheet each of Simon Says Stamp cardstocks in the colors Sea Glass, Ivory, Cotton Candy, and Dark Chocolate. Card number one is actually a pretty simple card because I'm going to use mostly the uh, papers and the stickers that come in the kit. So I've started off with some of that Sea Glass cardstock that I had cut down to four and a quarter inches by eleven and a half, or eleven inches, and then I scored that at five and a half inches. And I'm just pulling out some of the papers, just two of them, and all I want are the wood grain on both of these. So I am just trimming them down to look like panels, and I'm going to go all the way to the graphic. So I'm going to get as much of that as I can, because I really want, I'm, I'm trying to make a bit of a scene here, and so um, I'm just trying to cut as much of that as I possibly can. Because I'm going to make those white, kind of try to look like a wall panel or some siding or something. And then I'm going to cut off as much of the brown wood grain as I possibly can as well. So I'm trying to line that up and see. And I don't have a full panel's worth, which ends up being okay. Um, I end up screwing it up anyway. So, um, yeah. So I'll just cut down as much of that brown as I can get to kind of make it look like a floor. So I know it's not going to go to the top or the bottom. And I have decided to use some tape runner, and you can tell I haven't used tape runner in a while, just simply because, uh, and this is why I like to use liquid glue, because I don't tend to get things on straight. And if I had been thinking, I would have used my T-ruler, but I wasn't thinking, and as you can tell, it's not straight. So I try and fix it, and I'm like, oh no, I'm just going to rip the paper. So I stop, and I thought, all right, we'll just work with what we have, and we'll figure out a plan. And so I do, because I wanted this to dry fairly quickly, I do use the tape runner all over the back there because I know I'm just going to end up having those white panels go all the way, as far as I can, all the way up to the top. So I'll start putting those down, um, just kind of getting the look that I want, and they just keep getting more crooked as I go. So I'm not sure if I didn't cut them correctly or if that bottom panel that I put down so, uh, so crooked ends up making it just bad. But that's okay. I will end up fixing it. I'm going to end up using the My Favorite Thing Stitched Rectangle Stacks die. So I had adhered this right to that card base, but I'm going to end up having to trash the card base. It's okay. I will end up having a little bit of that left over. So now that those are all adhered, I'll trim those down just using my scissors. And I'll save that one big brown wood panel piece for something later on. But I'll just keep trimming those off. And at this point, I'm realizing that's really, really crooked. So that's where I grab the My Favorite Thing Stitch Rectangle Stacks die, and I trim that out, making it a little bit straighter. And I use the other card base that I had left over from that sea glass, and I'll adhere that down eventually. So I've taken the stickers, and I don't want them to be stickers anymore. So I'm using my embossing bag all over the back. And this will just make it easy if I want to pop them up or 
to try and figure out my placement, which is really the, the plan of it. I want to try and figure out my placement, and I don't want those sticking to the background before it's necessary. So I'm grabbing out each of the stickers that I think I want, covering that with the embossing bag to take away all that stickiness, and I'm trying to make it look like kind of a statement wall, I guess. And then I'll use that one uh, plants with the, the sticker with all the plants on it, and that'll be at the bottom. Make it look like those are sitting on the floor. So I finally wise up. I put some foam tape all over the back of those stickers, just the ones that are going to go on the wall. And I'm using my T-ruler to make sure that things are straight. Like I said, I finally learned my lesson. I think most of the time I just get, I don't want to say lazy, although I'm pretty sure that's the word I'm looking for. Uh, I just kind of get into mode and I think I can do this, but I can't. So <laughs> um, that's why I end up going, oh. If I, I would save myself so many steps if I would just grab the T-ruler most of the time. And I'll adhere all those down. And then I don't want my plants to be popped up, so I end up using liquid glue to adhere those to the card base, or to the card panel. And then I'll end up using that same liquid glue to adhere that to my card base. And once I get that adhered as straight as possible, that will end up finishing off this card and it was really simple, and I really like the way that ended up looking. It's kind of fun. And then you could use this card for just about anything. A thank you, or just thinking of you, or whatever. Card number two may actually be my favorite, but I think it's because of that beautiful rain boot, plant or die. I just love it. It's so big and beautiful. And so I've trimmed down some Express It cardstock that I had. And I've also trimmed down some of the craft cardstock that, card stock that came in the kit. And I'm running that through my Sizzix Sidekick. I love this die because it fits perfectly through my sidekick, and we all know I love that. And the reason I'm running the craft through as well is because I, I don't feel like this is actually cardstock. If I mean, if it is, it's just really thick cardstock. And what I have planned for the planter die is to, um, I want to stack those up so that it's a little bit thicker because those flowers can be a little bit flimsy at the at the stems. So I'm Copic coloring, and I have this uh, fast-forwarded up to about 8 simply because this isn't this video isn't about the coloring and I'll tell you the colors that I used for my pinks I used R11 R20 and R22 for my stems and leaves I used G94 and G99 this is basically some I guess no line water or not watercolor but no line coloring then I'm using W5 W7 and W9 for the boot and I'm just going back and forth and trying to differentiate. And I actually wasn't even thinking about the fact that it was be, it would be no line coloring. Uh, and I think it ended up turning out okay. I kind of struggled with the black, but the, the way that I was able to do it is I would definitely keep your scrap piece of paper so that you can stick it back in, and that way it's a whole lot easier to color. But that's my personal opinion. Now I am going to stack those up, and I'm just using liquid glue and it'll make it very sturdy because what I plan to do with it is I plan to have it on a belly band for a gatefold card. And so I'm just going to make sure that that's adhered and I'm going to get some craft card stock and this is just from my stash. This is some Nina Desert Storm and I uh, have it uh, I'm scoring it at two and one eighth inch and that card stock was originally five and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So I'm just scoring that at two and one eighth so that it will line up perfectly there in the center. I've trimmed down some of that pattern paper and I had trimmed that down to five and a quarter inches by four inches and then I trimmed that in half so that they're two inch panels. So those are two inches by five and a quarter and then I'm just going to line those up. I'm going to stick them down with some liquid glue and line those up so they match perfectly in the center and uh, then it almost looks like there's really no cut in between. So they line up perfectly. And then for my belly band, I took another piece of cardstock. Well, before I did that, I did take the leftover piece of some of that pattern paper, and I just stuck that on the inside. It's just an easy way to decorate your insides without having to go too crazy if you don't want to. So for my belly band, I did trim down. It's one inch by eight inches. So because this paper is six by eight normally, you know, just trimming one inch off of that. It's not going to meet in the center, which is okay, because I plan to stick my planter, or my little my little rain boots, right there in the center. So I'll just put a little bit of a liquid glue, little bit of liquid glue on each of those sides, and then I will adhere 
my rain boots to that and I'm going to set that off to the side to dry because I, I don't want to start sticking that on. I want to make sure that dries just completely. I also decide to take one of the sentiments and I'm going to stamp that on the inside of my card just using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. This is going to be a thank you card. I did stick a sticker down on the front and then that's how you take your belly band on and off. You don't want it to be too tight but yeah I love how this one turned out. Just a a fun card. I'm definitely probably going to be doing more of these. So I struggled a little bit with card number three, but that's because I had an idea in my head, and sometimes that doesn't always translate the easiest. I did end up figuring it out, and I ended up getting what I wanted, but I still struggled. So I just have a piece of that ivory cardstock that came in the kit, and I'm going to stamp out the Hello Darling stamp. I'm going to stamp it a couple times, and um, but I want the flowers and the leaves to be a different color. So I'm starting off with peeled paint, and I'm going to ink that whole thing up. This is Distress Oxide ink. I'm going to ink the whole thing up, and then I'm going to go in with just like a paper towel, a little bit damp paper towel, and try and wipe off just where the flowers are. And that can pr prove to be a little bit difficult because some of those flowers are on the inside. I end up getting them the best that I can, and um, my next part was how I was going to actually ink up the flowers once I had that part stamped out. So I've stamped it. It doesn't need to be perfect because the Hello Darling itself is going to be covered up. Now I'm going in with scattered straw, and I thought I'll just use my finger and ink those flowers up that way. And it actually ended up working really well, believe it or not. So I'm just, you know, putting the ink on my fingers and then dabbing that onto each of those flowers. And I was actually quite impressed with how that worked. So yeah, it was, I was thankful. It worked really well. Once again, I don't care how the Hello Darling itself looks because I'm going to end up covering that up. I did run that through my Big Shot using my Large Labels Nest Abilities. I don't know if that's still available, but if I can find it, I will link that down below. I'm inking the stamp up one more time with VersaFine Onyx Black ink, and I don't care that the whole stamp isn't inked up. I don't want the whole stamp. I just want the Hello Darling. So I'll ink that up a couple times, and then I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut that out all along the outside of the words it's themselves. And uh, that actually was really easy, didn't take any time. And now I'm covering that back with some foam tape and I'm peeling all the backing paper off of that foam tape. And then I'm gonna stick that right over the green Hello Darling because I wanted those to really stand out. And now I'm gonna go on to adhering the rest or finishing off the rest of my card. So I had trimmed down some pattern paper from the kit and I'm adhering that to some of that chocolate um, cardstock, the dark chocolate cardstock. And then I, because that's such a dark cardstock, I do have some more of that ivory cardstock cut down. And I'm going to take that leftover pattern paper and put that right on the edge. And I'm going to cover that with some of that liquid glue. And that is going to go on the inside of the card. You wouldn't have to do this if you had like a white gel pen or something. You could easily just write on the inside of the card. But um, I like the way this looks and I don't always have a white gel pen handy when I'm wanting to use a card. I'll adhere the Hello Darling to the front of the card, and then I'm going to stamp another sentiment from this set on the inside of the card, just using some Memento Tuxedo Black ink. And then for a final bit of embellishment, I'm going to use some of those tonic Bohemian Teal uh, vintage drops just over the top of some of those drops. Now, uh, forewarning, if you do it over the top of Distress inks, Distress Oxide especially, it might tint your, your drops. And it mine did just a little. It turned those blue just a little bit, little bit green. But they're still mostly blue. It's more of a blue-green. <laughs> and then I'll do one last bit with the um, ebony on the flowers because I wanted those to match the flowers on the pattern paper. And that'll finish off card number three. It ended up working out, but I'm telling you, I struggled at first. <laughs> Card number four is just a super easy card that does a lot of repeat stamping. I started off by trying to do it inside of my mini Misty, but this was completely unnecessary and actually just it would have ended up being a lot more work. So what I'm doing is I'm inking this up with some Distress Oxide ink in the color Tattered Rose. I tried to match the colors to the papers as best I could, so my next color is Scattered Straw. And all I'm doing is working down the rainbow using the different long stamps that are in this set. The next one is peeled paint. 
And then the last color will be Evergreen Bow. So I will work those same patterns all the way down using all four, four of those colors in the same order. Sort of rainbow, but just like a more subdued rainbow. Um, I just saw those patterns and I thought we could do something really fun with those. And so I'll just work those all the way down the bottom. And it didn't really take a lot of time. I guess the longest amount of time was the clean off. You know, cleaning each stamp in between and making sure that it was good and clean and, and then re-stamping and... You know, eventually I discovered that I didn't need to wipe off my glass mat that often. It really didn't matter if I ended up getting ink on the back of my cardstock. It really wasn't that big of a deal. So I worked all those until I got to the very bottom. And then I decided to trim off that last little bit of wood grain paper on that one piece of patterned paper. And then I'm going to stamp the sentiment that says hello there on that one chunk of paper that I had from my was it the first card? Yes, from the first card that I made. So I'm gonna do some heat embossing on this. So I will grab out the embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp. It's just a clear sticky ink, kind of like Versamark ink. And then I will use my embossing bag over the top of that. And then cover that with the clear or white embossing powder. And then I'll heat that till that is smooth and melted. Now I'm using my tape runner once again because I want to line up those wood grain pieces on the back just to give it a little bit of a border. So I just put some on each of the sides and then I'll line it up using my glass mat and then I will adhere those. Then I'll flip that over and trim off the excess pieces just using my scissors. And then I will cover the back of that with some liquid glue and adhere that to that other pattern piece panel which ends up measuring four inches by five and a quarter, and it'll fit onto a craft piece of cardstock. That's gonna be my card base that I'm going to adhere that panel to as well. And this will be a side folding A2 size card. And then I'm gonna take the hello there, and I'm gonna cover that with the liquid glue on the back. Adhere that down, and I did have a little bit of pattern paper left over from that pink um, plaid background and I so I will put that on the inside of my card as well I later on after I'm done with all these cards end up taking some of those stickers and adhering those to the insides because it just they just went so well and I love using up products I don't know why I just do I feel accomplished when I do I know that some people like to hoard and I, I have a tendency to hoard some things as well but yeah, when I use pattern papers and use stickers up, I feel pretty accomplished. So I will tap down my Nouveau Drops onto an embossing container, and then that'll finish off card number four. Really easy, simple pattern to make. Card number five is a fun one because I put a window in the card. I had this idea that I would uh, cut out a window from my pink card base and I would even use, I, I even plan to use some of the bag that the kit comes in. I don't typically do that, but you know, why not use whatever you have, right? And so I'm just taping one of my larger square nestabilities into place and I'm gonna cut down some of that bag. I mean, these bags are great. You could use the, you, I mean, hang on to them. You can use these for some crafting. And so I ran those through my Sizzix uh, Big Shot and so I have a big window in my card base, and then I have just some of that craft bag. I cut that out with a, the bigger square nestability, and now I'm gonna start working on my stamping. For my planter, I'm using all the same colors that I have before. So this is the evergreen bow, and then I'm gonna start stamping some leaves or stems using the peeled paint. I'm going through and I'm just putting those all in that planter box, trying to be aware of how my flowers themselves would layer and then I'm going to start stamping the flowers and I'm going to use the colors scattered straw and tattered rose once again to stamp out those flowers and I'm just using the different petals that come in the kit there's quite a few actually this stamp is a very big stamp set and so it did come with quite a few options for petals or yeah petals and then I fussy cut that out which didn't take long and I'm going to start assembling my card but before I do that, I want to cut my curtains. And I'm just freehand cutting these. So I'll cut one out of that one side, and then I'm going to flip it over and use it as a, a guide to cut out the other so that they're at least fairly uniform. And then once I get those cut out, I'm going to crumple them a little bit. 
just a little bit. I'll crumple those and get those ready to stick on the inside of my card. <clears throat> I want these to look like little curtains and that the flower box is sitting on the outside of the window. So I'll use my liquid glue just on those three edges where they will connect to the back of my card base. And uh, it's not, I don't think it's much of an eyesore because this I suppose would be the inside of your house. <laughs> You'd have the curtains there. And I'll do that on that other one as well. And adhere that down with that liquid glue. And then I'm going to close that up. And I'll start thinking about how I want to assemble the flowers. I don't like the pink in the background, I decide. So I use some of the um, sea glass cardstock that came in the kit. I have that trimmed down to four inches by five and a quarter. And then I'll just adhere that on the inside with some liquid glue. Then I'll close that up after I've used my mono sand eraser. Of course, I got ink on something. What is crafting without getting a little ink on things? And so then I'll just put a little glue on that bottom edge. I do decide later on that I, I want it to be a little bit more secure, so I do use more. But for now, for my sentiment, I have just a piece of black cardstock that I had sitting around. I'm inking up one of the sentiments that says, Thinking of You, with the clear embossing ink from Simon Says Stamp, covering that with that white embossing powder, and then heating that till that is smooth and melted. And then I will trim that down and cover that back panel with some foam tape to have a little bit of dimension. I'll peel off the backing of that foam tape and then I will adhere my sentiment to the front of my card. And it's at this point that I realize I do want to have those flowers a little bit more secured. So wherever it's touching the curtains, I am putting down a little bit more of that liquid glue. And that'll just ensure that those flowers are a bit more secure. I didn't get it on camera, but I do end up putting a couple, uh, three little heart stickers on the inside, and then I'm going to finish off the outside using that Bohemian Teal Vintage Drops, just putting three drops on that one side and three drops on the other. I will tap those down to give them a little bit more of an enamel dot look, and then that's going to finish off card number five. So let's go ahead and take a look at a few of the other cards that I made. I did make two bonus cards. For the first bonus card, I adhered some cans and XL watercolor paper to the foam adhesive that came in the kit and then ran my die through my Sizzix Sidekick. Once again, I kept the negative and the positive pieces together to make coloring a bit easier. I painted this with my Daniel Smith watercolors. And then to assemble my card, I glued some pattern paper to a dark chocolate card base. I adhered the pink square to another piece of the brown bag and then attached those to the card with liquid glue. I white heat embossed a sentiment onto a strip of pattern paper and attached that to the card and then adhered my die cut watercolored rain boots for a final bit of embellishment. I then used the Bohemian Teal Drops and that finished off this card. This last bonus card uses up more of those stickers. I attached a piece of pattern paper to my pink card base, then I die cut a circle from more of the brown bag and attached that to the card. I also trimmed down some more pieces of the pattern paper and adhered those to the card. And then finally I attached the stickers. Such a super easy card. So let's go ahead and take a look at all the cards that I made today. All right, so here they are. I would love to know what you think of these cards. If you had a favorite, go ahead and put that down below in the comment section. I'd love to know. And uh, if you like this video, hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. And uh, as always, I will have items listed down below that I use. And thank you guys so much for stopping by.